Fenimore. I'm a decoy carver, and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about weather vanes today, but my real strength is decoy carving. I was the Seaport's first decoy demonstrator in the old building across the street. And that, uh, in 2001, at Seaport asked Servo, the carvers, if they would make weather vanes. This is the one I chose to make, and if you looked around the Seaport, you'll see there's at least a half a dozen different uh, weather vanes. Now, weather vanes were made a thousand years ago, and they were wood, because that's the only thing they had. They didn't have metal to work with like we have today. So they made them out of wood, and uh, basically they would make something just like this. Now the thing that you should have on every weather vane is an arrow, because as the weather vane turns, uh, the arrow points where the wind is coming from. And that's why they say the wind is out of the west or out of the east. The arrow is pointing where it's coming from. Where the main would have to be broader at some point, reverse of the arrow. So that when the wind blew, it wouldn't blow this end around. It would blow this end around because there was the most surface area. So the wind would blow this around and the arrow coming out here would point to where the wind was coming from. Now this particular one I made out of cedar and it's, it's, even though it's this thin, it is hollow. I hollowed it out because a hollow piece of wood, especially cedar, is less prone to crack. So I hollowed it out, put it together with a lot of glue. Now this one was made in 2001 and was the top one of the buildings here at the seaport until 2018. So it stood up there for 18 years, just a piece of wood. And you can see it's had some damage. It's separated at the neck here and it's separated in the front. Uh, I took this down in 2018 and uh, recoded it just to protect it and put it on this base. So the new one is basically the same thing, maybe a little more, a few more screws in it and uh, just overall a little stronger. But this stood 18 years and stood right through the storm. Now, 2,000 years ago, they made them to tell where the wind was coming from, which way it was going, and they do the same thing today. Today, these would be made out of brass or bronze or even cast iron. The balls on here, as far as I know, this is just decorative. Yeah. They have them, but you wouldn't use this really as a lightning arrestor, so you wouldn't really need those. This gives you the directions, and this would be set up to be pointing. If this was here, north would be right there. So if the arrow was here, if this came around in the wind, the arrow would point here. The new replacement for this, the arrow was used on that one, so that's why it's over there. But this arrow then would be pointing here, so the wind would be out of the north. And that's just about all you really need to know or do to make uh, one of these up if you wanted to make it out of wood. After our storm here, the bad storm of Sandy, I repaired several of the ones here at the seaport, including a one, one that's made out of metal, which is on the boat building. But they were damaged. One was damaged beyond repair, but most of them here at the seaport are made of wood and metal combinations. Uh, there's only two, I think, that are all wood, like this one is, not considering this metal part. On the base of one of these, you would have a, a V assembly or a flat or any kind of roof you had. You would just set it on there, put a couple bolts in it, and you'd be ready to go. You want to know which way the wind's blowing. You've got to say, well, it's coming from the north. So it's coming here's north. It's coming from the north. It's blowing that way. What is north of you? And so uh, the wind's prevailing in this uh, area here. Wind is prevailing from the west. So if the wind's out of the west, you know that anything west of you is going to come to you. So they know that those clouds way over there, and that wind is coming in that direction, those clouds are coming here. I guess that the first weather vanes really had a lot to do with sailing. We wanted to know where, where the wind was coming from. We were depending on sailing. And so they had the first weather vanes. Farmers, they wanted to know where, you know, they would forecast their own weather based on the direction of the wind and, and the sky. So it's always important. Well, the wind's out of the west on our beach. It's going to blow the flies.
from inland down to the beach, so you're gonna have flies, especially if you've got marshland behind you. Wind's coming out of the west, pushing those flies. You want the wind to be coming off the ocean. You get the cool ocean breeze, and there's no flies out there. So that would be the only thing that would affect you on the beach. Plus, wind from, be, from the west is gonna flatten the ocean. And you're not gonna get big waves. Wind from on the ocean is gonna bring in waves, and cool air. Again, I'm Clarence Fenimore, Decoy Carver, and uh, if you come down here occasionally, you might find me here demonstrating or see something down here at the shop. Right now, we're over at the Parker Building, and up top, you can see the weather vane that replaced the weather vane we talked about earlier. It's basically the same weather vane that's made of cedar, and it's hollow, and it's glued together with a few screws, and you can see that this one has an arrow. So now, as this one turns, that arrow should be pointing to where the wind is actually coming from. So that about wraps it up for our weather vanes and we hope you kids can make your own. So the materials you'll need for this project for our weather vane are a paper cup or styrofoam cup, one you could put a hole in, a straw, plastic or paper, a pencil with an eraser on top, a pin, some paper, some markers, and some scissors. Right, so the first thing we're gonna do is make kind of a base for our weather vane. So as you know, weather vanes tell us what direction the wind is pointing in. So I'm just gonna cut out a square of paper, bigger than my cup, and then I'm gonna mark this with the directions north, south, east, and west, so that when I take it outside, I can point this to north, and then it'll tell me what direction the weather is going. For my directions, you can have fun decorating your base however you want. Alright, so our base is done. You can go ahead and decorate your cup too while we're at it. Alright, so now that everything is decorated, let's go ahead and put part of our weather beam together. So, the part that's going to go through the cup is the pencil. You could probably poke a hole through if it's styrofoam or if it's plastic, you might need to use something sharper. So my pencil is stuck right in there. Um, then we have to make the arrow part. So this part we're going to use the pin. This will spin and show us what direction the wind goes in. So for this we need to make an arrow. So to start out, I'm just going to cut a triangle out of my paper. So that'll be my front part, and then I'll need the back part as well, like that. To attach this, I'm going to cut a slit into the straw. So just a, like kind of cut it in half just a little bit so that we can stick something in there. Same thing on this side, just a little cut. Then I can stick my paper. So now I'm going to take my pin, find the middle of my straw, be careful, and poke that through. Both sides of the straw. Then this part's going to go into the eraser so that it stands like that. Now my straw is free to move with the wind. Before we take it outside, you might want to add something else to your weather vane. Clarence had a bird on his. Maybe there's an idea you have for the top of your weather vane that you could maybe tape to your pin somehow. You don't want to weigh this down too much or straw so that it can still move. But if you want to tape something there and customize your weather vane, we can do that now. All right, so there's the top of my weather vane. I'm ready to take it outside and see if I can tell away the wind is blowing from. <laughs> 